you really don't remember what, what goes on, what happens. When you're out there fighting, you're not relying on thinking, you're, you're relying on your reaction. So there is no thinking out there. If you're thinking, it's too slow. So that's why I never remember exactly what I do when I'm out there. You know, going back and watching the footage, I'm just like, man, did that just happen? Did I really just do that? Yeah, Lou. Jijin Funakoshi is generally accredited for having introducing and popularizing karate on the main islands of Japan. He was influenced by Kendo, thus incorporated ideas about distance and timing into his style. Naturally, forward could be a cornerstone to this overall philosophy because when it comes to a style inspired by a blade's edge, it has roots taking heed that one swing can end a match. In and out movement, lateral movement, even stance swaps, we now gain a glint of insight into the origins of Stephen Thompson's style. Fluid, articulate, a master at managing the distance. Timing his strikes come with foot and fist as edge. This is where Wonder Boy truly excels. Starting this pursuit, this passion from the age of three, this is the unique knowledge advantage he's drilled over the rest of the competition. Understanding this, let's take a closer glance from the ground up. The very foundation of his game, his stance. Standing in southpaw, we observe that wider, balanced karate stance increasing his mobility. It's not that he wants to block your strikes, instead, he wants to avoid your weapons altogether. Notice his lowered hands offering a more balanced distribution of weight, which aids forward. But also notice, he doesn't keep his chin tucked down. His chin is parallel with the floor against conventional wisdom. Why does he do this? This is directly correlated to his footwork as well. It's biology. Here's how. The inner ear has two functions. The first is hearing, but the second is balance. It is a warren of tubes filled with fluid encased within the temporal bone of the skull. Here is a very simple and instant way of proving this to yourself. Have your head straight up and tell someone whether it be your friend or family, training partner. Have them gently push you from the side. Push you on the arm, try to get you over. You will not move that much, it's not really that big of a deal. Now tilt your head in the direction you were just pushed. You will instantly fall in that direction. The difference is dramatic, night and day. The head tilt, while being pushed in that direction, is instantly noticeable. This understanding is actually already used in martial arts. The tie clench. A strong tie clench does not grab and pull on the neck, but instead controls the whole head, pivoting it into the direction you want to move your opponent. The moment posture is broken, head tilted, pulling your opponent into that direction becomes way easier for the same reason pushing you over just was. The position of your head directly correlates with your balance. This is why we see point stall fighters and even one of the most skilled kickboxing contenders of all time, Raymond Daniels, a karate and taekwondo background. You know, he also has his chin parallel with the floor. Balance. This naturally aids his nimble footwork and also aids in his beautiful, flashy kicks. Adding these components together, the wider stance, lowered hands, parallel chin, Stephen Thompson is using increased balance to leverage an increased capacity for stance swaps, lateral movement, and now we can also see how he distributes his weight into his kick so quickly and effectively. Increased balance helping him better distribute his weight. It all starts to make a little more sense now, he's leveraging balance for increased nimbleness. Through this stance, his ability to move and cover distance is so effective, coming in is almost surprising. This now brings us to the purpose of his stance swaps. Thompson starts in southpaw, but is a right hand dominant and right leg dominant. He brings his power leg forward, using it as one of his tools to maintain distance with a powerful pushing sidekick, often pushing to the body or fainting to the body, only to catch you up top. This makes engaging Wonder Boy very annoying. It's not a knockout blow, but it hurts and can stifle your game. He can also throw strong counters from his left in this position, but also has a three hit combo as bread and butter. The first strike gauging distance, the second distracting you, the third power shot from the lead dominant hand. His intention in southpaw is to read you, figure out your patterns and mentally dismantle you. From this stance, it's where he manages the distance most effectively. His stance swap to orthodox though. That is his execution stance, his right power hand now has a lot more power, but that right leg is what's most terrifying. It almost comes from nowhere, jab cross, distracting his opponent's focus then looking like he's about to angle out, driving his hips down into a powerful roundhouse. Southpaw, distance and dismantle, orthodox, devastating power. And the frequent stance swap between the two, it has him constantly creating a superior angle of attack. 
where he's in line to hit you while moving off the line you need to hit him. To make this transition more seamless, he actually has a third stance, one that's more traditionally known as a horse riding stance. Both feet are parallel, he's squared with the opponent, thus increasing his capacity to move laterally both left and right. All of this comes together to form this conclusion. Wonder Boy is a fitting name, because this is how he appears to continuously keep his opponents wondering, overloading them with difficult questions he himself has the answers to, sending his opponents to school with foot and fist. Now, I don't believe that there's such a thing as the best style. Styles make matchups and I believe Tyron Woodley proved that. To that end, it should be remembered that copying Steven Thompson may be good for some of you, but not all. Of course, you never know until you try. Who knows, maybe you'll leverage a unique knowledge advantage the same way Wonder Boy does. But nonetheless, as Bruce Lee has said, martial arts is about honestly expressing oneself. Maybe you're shorter, stockier, lankier, different ratio, fast twitch to endurance fiber. You know, it's a game of figuring out who you are and honestly expressing yourself in accordance to that self-awareness. I believe that's a philosophy, not just for martial arts, but life. If you like more work from me, please subscribe. It definitely helps the channel. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. It's good karma. And until next time, peace.